Welcome everybody to a very sticky, humid, tired episode 18 of the Lure Fishing Podcast. We're at the beautiful South End on Sea. South End on Sea. We're in the Lou Tide Tattoo Studio. And Charlie, you're tired and knackered. You've had a busy day. As always. As always. Yeah. Um, it's hot, isn't it? It's very hot. It was deceiving me because it looked like it wasn't going to be hot and all of a sudden it punched me in the face out of nowhere and I've been dripping down my forehead ever since. It's ten past six in the evening. Mm. We better be quick. Yeah. <laughs> we had to shut all the all the doors. Well, the door. Turn off all the fans so there's no background noise and, and the, the fallout from that is um, a very humid pair. <coughs> and, and dust. Yeah. <laughs> Both. Oh. Equally. Yeah. Oh. These seats are cool. They look, we're on cinema seats. Yeah. So these yeah. were reclaimed. Across the road from my shop was an old theatre, which, well, a cinema slash theatre. It's been both over its lifetime. Um, it had a fire and was dismantled. And the builders that were doing the ripping out came around and said, oh, do you want to, uh, these old seats out of, out of the cinema? The theatre. I said, yeah. So I took them. They were knackered. The foam that was in the in them was disintegrating to dust. Uh, I lived next door to an upholsterer. He took them. He worked his magic, and now they look brand new. They're actually very comfortable. Yeah, surprisingly so. Yeah, yeah. we try not to move so they don't squeak. Yeah, they do <laughs> that. So we just have to not do that. Your mine doesn't. No, I think I've got a squeaky one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did that a minute ago. Yeah, it's still there, is it? That's very uh, very on topic from what we're talking about today. My fingers stink. So we had a little bit of prep for today, <laughs> all, all of all of three minutes or so. But we literally didn't know what we were going to be talking about today until we all did. Of five minutes we, ago. We did, yeah, we did, yeah. Sticky we fingers. Keep, keep the facade going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll come on to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, so let's backtrack a little bit. Episode sixteen was the live. Yes. I really enjoyed doing that. Really enjoyed it. That was good fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, we've made a, an executive decision that. Episode 20 will be the last one for this season. And if I get my uh, dates right, it's the 22nd of August. It is. So we'll, we'll go live again on that Monday at 7 o'clock. And we've got three guests that we've had on, mm -hmm. hopefully, joining us. So that'll be yep. Tom Moyer from FFS Lures. That will be uh, Tom Hunt from Westin. And that will be DB from DB Fishing. Yep. Uh, fingers crossed, because everyone said yes, but... Everyone's got busy lives. Yeah, something's going to happen. Yep. So the format is that if we get all three guys on, Tom might Tom might join us because mm -hmm. he only lives half a mile down the road. You drag him in between us. And what I did think, it was a bit daft sitting in, making him be remote. Yeah. <laughs> God, Moya, yeah. so, we'll, we'll get you on the screen. I yeah. thought, so I, did, I thought, yeah, because in our head we were going to have all three and get them on yep. separately on the yep. screen we did the live, but I think that'd be a bit rude if we kicked him off, wouldn't it? Yep. So we, you, can't, you can't come on until the end. and <laughs> Even though you live down the road, you're not yeah. allowed on. But uh, yeah, so we'll, we've got a little format. So we'll have Tom Moy with us, and we'll have Tom Hunt and DB remote. Yeah, and then so, we can yeah bounce off of them and and discuss different things with different people. However, what I thought was second half of the podcast, if you guys could send in comments for them on the live, then we can ping it to one of the three guests. Mm -hmm. For the second half, that might yeah. be quite a nice way. Yeah, they've had their dedicated little sections, but we can always jump back to them. Yeah. Not let them go, basically. Hold them there for ransom until we're done. You can see we've really thought about this. Yep. <laughs> it, it will develop. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a word they use, isn't it? It will develop yep. on the day. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And we're going to try something a little bit different for episode 19 as well, which we're not going to disclose yet. Because we've got, a, we've got a guest potentially lined up. The guest doesn't know he's a guest, though. Yeah. He has to be a guest. Yeah. This, this is going to be cryptic. He, yeah. He, well, he asked to be a guest. But we haven't we haven't conquered it yet. But So the idea is we might be doing something a little bit different just as a test run. But we'll leave that up in the air for now. I think it'll work. Yeah. We'll try it, yeah. So 22nd of August, mark that in your calendars, diaries. 7pm. Whatever you want to do, 7pm. What could go wrong? What could go wrong, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. And then what we'll do, we'll revisit, we'll come back to the podcast uh, next April springtime yeah. yeah and have a big old push for second season because what yeah. I've learned with these podcasts is you've got to get a, at least one season under your belt to become established and then viewers um, trust that you're going to be there uh -huh. 
So I think second, third season, we can really push it and see where we go. So that'd be great. Yeah. Oh, I did forget to mention this episode is actually sponsored. Oh. Yeah, we have a second sponsor. It is uh, Tom Moyer. Oh. FFS Lurs. So I shall stick up FFS Lurs uh, web site page down here. Mm-hmm. It's got a competition running at the minute as well. Cool. Um, let me get this right. It's a biggest, longest chub competition. Mm. It's part of his community group. Tom's got a very strong FFS Lurs yes. community group on Facebook. And it's a competition for the guys who are part of the community group. So you need to be part of that. A member. And it's, you have to buy the new frog. It's the Finesse Frog 2.0. And you have to board it from July onwards. And then you, it's any chub caught on that bait. And it's mm. a £50 gift voucher, I believe, for first prize. Wow. So that's quite a nice little initiative that Tom's running there with his, uh, his Facebook community. So that's yep. good. Um, a couple of lures that Tom's pumping out a lot of are the frog. Mm-hmm. So the Finesse Frog 2.0 and the flukes. There's a, people are, it kind of answers the question I yeah. sent you last week. Yeah. People are rigging these... I think that's, is it 70 centimetre? And it's a 70 centimetre, 70 mil. 70, 70 centimetre, that's a monster. Yeah. yeah, and 100 mil flukes. And they're yeah. obviously um, weightless surface film fishing with them or just under the surface. Ash Costa has got a very interesting way. I can't, I can't say it any more than that. Uh, he's got a very interesting way of fishing surface flukes. Um, if we can ever drag him on this podcast at some point, which will have to be next season now, unfortunately. We well, um, meant to get him on, but know, time's just yeah, exactly. gone, isn't it? But he has got a very innovative and interesting way of fishing flukes. I know um, what it is, but we'll talk about it after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't but that's it, for but him to discuss, yeah. not, not us. Yeah. Um, the higher you go with the with warm weather, the more the fish seem to get aggressive. Mm-hmm. It? So it's a, mm-hmm. it's all good stuff. Yeah. So that's that one. Um, like I said, I'll put a link in the description. To FFS Lures as well. Yep. Did you notice I actually managed to... Ca- in the description from last episode, there were so many things going on. There was uh-huh. your EEL podcast. Yep. There was Sean Faustus's web page. Yep. The Angling Groups. The Angling Groups. And there was... Oh, yeah, Wolf Creek Lures. Yep. Oh, it's a, when you do the description, I'm thinking, what, what did I say I was <laughs> going to put in the description? But I think we got there in the end. Got it all there, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so... That's with so keep an eye on Tom's website, and obviously, if you're not part of his community group, have a look because there's a lot of people part of it, mm-hmm. and it's one of those uh, buoyant discussion uh, forums where people Very don't active. yeah they don't get too spiteful because mm. he, he monitors it quite carefully. So yep. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Right, buddy. Have you been out much? No, no. I've been very very busy. I've been planning future trips, as you know. Yeah, we've got some good things coming up. We have. Um, we've got a bass fishing trip. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, which is actually two weeks away-ish. A little under. That's under two weeks. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, down Again, down in Brighton. Um, and we're not going to be persuaded away from bass this time. We're not going species hunting this time. <laughs> we're not after the squid. No, no. No, we want bass and just bass this Big time. Big bass. Big bass, preferably. Yeah. Um, so we've got that. Then I've got a trout area competition on the 14th, which I'm going to be fishing. In a, in a brand new trout area venue in Lincolnshire, which um, we'll talk a bit more. I think I can't remember if I spoke about it before, in the previous podcast. I think or you not. touched upon it. Um, so I've got that. So and then, so that's mid August. Then we're looking to the end of August, September, and everything wakes up. Well, well, unless this heat wave continues. By the calendar, it does anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm, I'm not getting worried. I'm just a, I'm a little bit. Mm-hmm. If it's because I was, I've been walking a few rivers. Mm. And obviously the the levels are well down, and the resis when they open up, it's going to be. It's not going to be good, is it? No. Because water temperatures. Really I wonder high. if there's any um, argument for keeping them closed for a little bit longer. Money. Well, yeah. Yeah, that'd be the argument against it. Yeah. But I think there's a very strong argument for not opening up for fish mm. uh, welfare because yeah. um, I think these they must be into the twenties by now, well into the twenties. The, oh. the water temperatures. Well, Hanningfield's twenty two. Yeah. And just give people an idea of how hot it's been and how much um, of a strange year it's been for, for, the, for the reservoirs. But, you know, work at Hanningfield, I can give you a little bit of an insight. I think we're down to about 62% capacity. So we've lost 38%. Um, and when you start with 26 billion litres of water, losing 38% is quite a lot. It's about nine and a 
half-ish billion litres of water. That's incredible, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, try and fathom yeah. that. That's a, that's a lot of water. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't doesn't come back overnight. It takes a little while no. to recover. And the water temperature doesn't drop overnight either. So even if we were to get a bit of cool period now with, with a bit of rain and all the stuff we need, it's going to take a while for the water to be what I would call fishable. It would, yeah. It's It would take a couple of weeks. We've got the, we've got the WPC mm-hmm. uh, weekend after next. And getting worried about that because... Um, mine and Eric's forte are pike, yeah. obviously. Now the way it is, Gary's got going to have to consider uh, not having the pike as part of the comp. Yeah. Which is what definitely what I would recommend he does. Yeah. Um, we need to get that water temperature right down to like, well, well below the twenties. Yeah. But hey ho, it's cool. Um, so a bit torn because for the competition we we want the the pike in it, but for pike welfare, mm-hmm. we, obviously um, that that takes precedent, and we don't. Don't want to be um, going for them, but um, yeah. it's there's a little bit of a window still for it to cool down, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. But um, I always think with things like this, there's it's an anomaly. Mm-hmm. So nature does things, the fish react appropriately, and yeah. um, you've just got to work out what's going on. But yeah. at the minute, it's not a good idea to fish for pike, is it? No, I wouldn't say it's that crazy an idea to fish for perch either. Yeah, yeah. All Zander. I, I mean, for me personally, just fishing in general at the moment is uncomfortable. It's not something I really fancy doing. Um, you know, anyone knows me knows how how mad I am about fishing, and I've fished in some of the craziest um, conditions. You know, cold, wet, windy. I've done it all, but fishing in this heat doesn't do anything for, anything for no. me. You know, no. it just doesn't. It doesn't encourage me to want to go fishing. I just want to be indoors. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I used to be very much outdoorsy, beach barbecues, mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. like getting out of a kayak or whatever. Getting older, I'm just becoming boring. I'm just sitting, <laughs> sitting in the nice, cool indoors. It's like, yeah, yeah, which is very sad. But it's definitely not conducive for fishing. I have walked a couple of rivers, mm-hmm. and to be fair, I have tried to catch a chub or two. Yeah, um, but I've not been much at all. No, but uh, it's been int- interesting. What it's been, um, I've used it as a fitness tool. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. uh, getting fatter. I wanted to get me my belly and uh, walk. I'd hate walking, but I thought, you know what, if I combine it with a bit of river walking and jungle warfare, yeah, it might work. And I've been doing a bit of that. It's been very rewarding. But you're right; it's just not. No, no. Unless you know, a couple of hours in the morning, a couple of hours in the evening, if that's what you, you need, really need to tickle that itch or scratch that itch. But you need to go early, don't you? You need yeah. to get out by four or yeah. five. And, really. I, and at the moment, I, I've, I've had I set my alarm early a couple of times over the past couple of weeks with the intention of going fishing quickly, and I've woken up for no. Nah. No, I, 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 my my time in bed is quite precious at the moment. <laughs> I bet, yeah, you don't get, don't get much of it. No, no, but yeah. So uh, well, we've got the the bass fishing is the next thing. Yeah, that will be good. Yeah, yeah, and uh, chance of PB. Chance of PB, very realistic chance of PB. Well, mine's well, about three, three pounds. Yeah, it? Well, it's, that time of year, you know, sort of mid to end of August into September is very very good. On it's very very possible to catch a very big fish. So it's all on the cards. Are and we going to use Wayne's lures? Yeah. If we them. remember to take them. Yeah. Because <laughs> I definitely won't. So as long as you remember to, remember to take them with us, then yes. Yeah. So we, we must give those guys... I mean, it'd be nice to get a monster bass on one of Wayne's uh, yeah, shouts, absolutely. wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 If yeah. Robin would have let us chuck it out. Robin doesn't get a say. He might tell us off or try to. <laughs> yeah. Robin likes likes people playing with stuff. He likes, <laughs> he likes to see people, people using things he's not used to seeing. Um... Yeah, so the bass fishing, and then leading on quite nicely to today, to today, uh, I've got that trout area competition. Mm. Now, for anyone who's not done a lot of trout area fishing, um, it's it's very very alien to what your usual fishing might be. It's very regimented. It's uh, it's purely competition based. It's not something you'd really do much for just for fun. It's it's very competitive. It's all about numbers of fish in the net as quickly as and as efficiently as possible. Um, and with the format being as different as that and the, the experience being as different as that, as you can imagine, the tackle and bait is very different as well. So um, it's ultra-light lure fishing. So generally you're using lures that are sub-3 grams. You know, very often the actual hardware, the, the, the jig will be under a gram, maybe 0.8 or 0.6 of a gram if you're using soft plastics. Um, and then there's the options of spoons and things like that. But it's all about catch and release. So with trout area fishing, it's not about weight or size or... Uh, Keep smelling my fingers. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. cumulative length or anything like that. It's about just landing the fish and releasing it as quickly and as safely as possible. Say there's 20 anglers. Uh-huh. Are there 20 pegs? Yeah, well, yes. So there'll be 20 pegs, um, but the peg you draw at the beginning isn't the peg you stay in. No, this is a bit that... So you rotate. rotate. So everyone covers the same same water over Are there 20 the rotations? No. So there will or 19? Be, no, there will be maybe four or five, but you might move down four pegs at a time. Oh, is it is it random with how many move? It, it, it depends on the, the competition organiser. Okay. They choose and yeah. the, how many... Uh, right what time periods there are, you know, that sort of thing, and how, and how many pegs you might move down. So is this all uh, established before the match starts? Yeah. Okay. Take two. Yeah, so <laughs> we had some minor camera gremlins there, which we've uh, very quickly rectified. But uh, as I was saying, so trout area fishing, you draw your peg, and obviously you get that water fresh right at the beginning of the match, or competition, whatever you want to call it, and then as it progresses, obviously the, the more pegs you move through... They've been fished more, so by the end it becomes very difficult because fish have been covered hundreds of times a day. But one of the most popular methods of fishing for stocked trout, uh, or trout in general actually nowadays, on lure fishing equipment is with soft plastics. Uh, now these soft plastics are not your, your regular shads and creature baits and things like that. They're their own little things. And I've got a selection of them today because what we're going to be talking about is scent on baits. Um, and they love it. They love smelly baits. I'm really worried about the sound. Can you hear yourself? I can hear myself. Yeah. Cool, mate. We've we viewers. We've just had <laughs> <laughs> the strangest set of circumstances. Yeah. My brain's yeah yeah right. Sorry, smelly baits. Smelly baits. Yeah. My, so my fingers still smell. We're gonna be gen- <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be generically talking about scent on baits and whether we th- what our opinions on it are and whether we think there's one that's better than others. But I'm gonna. Try to portray through this way what these things smell like. We need smelly vision. These things yeah. are horrible. So uh, we've got from oh. FL or from Fresh Lures FL, and this is the Moak Nut. I'm going to butcher this. I'm pretty sure it's a Lithuanian word. Moak uh, and these are cheese flavoured. I don't actually want to touch them if I'm being deadly honest. Um, but oh. <laughs> they. Absolutely, uh, just wafting. Hold on, I'm, 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 get a to give one. it. The, I'm going to do a big waft, oh, mate. Oh. Yeah, if you, smelling salts, you don't need them. Oh. If, you, if, you, if you know anyone who's into area trout fishing, just have a little creep down their bag. I don't really like cheese, as in the you know parmesan. Yeah, it's yeah. too smelly for me. Yeah. Oh God, this stuff. So sort of another level, isn't it? And so it, I'm going to try, I've, you I, pick well, one up. Pick one up, so you can you can touch them. I don't really want to taint my hands if I can possibly help it. Um, These grubs are weird. So yeah, they're like little. I think I think they're meant to imitate a uh, bee larva. Um, yeah, that's what they're, they're based that, on. Akichunda. Yeah, I'm not touching it. Bee larva. Bee larva. Do you trout know what bee larva? Well, apparently. Stock trout. But yeah. <gasps> But yeah, so that's that's what they and there's other God. F- variations and forms of, but generally they all stink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the three most popular scents I found within trout fishing it smells is, like a Turkish brothel oh. <laughs> in forty degrees heat. <laughs> Not that I know. <coughs> I'm sure you don't. Um, oh yeah, so cheese is a big one. Is a very popular smell. Garlic for whom? Is for, for, well, for trout. Or for people <laughs> that fish for trout. Yeah, not for us. Um, cheese, garlic and chilli and combinations of the above. So, like, very often you find, like, chilli cheese or garlic chilli. That absolutely stinks. Yeah. It's yeah. reasty. But, evidently, trout like it. Because they, they, they wouldn't all smell of it if there wasn't something in it, sure. Did we mention this last episode? We, or the we briefly mentioned, mentioned it. We, we pulled ourselves away for it because we sort of knew we were going to come to a, a full episode at some point. Did we? Yeah. Have how, you had how a plan? professional of us. Yeah, yeah, that's good, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I, it's beyond me how... That, mind you, that is, that's such a stench. Yeah. That any, any animal within 100 metres of this shop mm-hmm. would smell that. Yeah. So I could see how a fish would get that because it'd probably kill them. <laughs> Yeah, it is that potent. Oh, I'm going to have to do something with my fingers. Yeah. So, it is popular. It wouldn't be... It wouldn't be... And anyway, it, when I say it's on all of them, it is on 
All of them. Every trout area soft boat has some sort of scent to it. Um, well, we, remember we went to Hanningfield and yeah. you had those really bizarre... The ribbed things. Yeah. Trick ones. And you showed me these. I went, oh, are we really going to use those? But yeah. I thought, well, when in Rome. Yeah. And they did work. Yeah, they work. Yeah. Yeah. So you sort of have the trust and method to a, to a certain... I have no idea extent. why they work. No. And I can't in my head work out why a trout would find them remotely. No. Um, but those, those weird grubby little things that they've got a very erratic action or they don't like because you you fish them on a on a jig head and they sort of like dance and do, 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 do. it's very i can see why trout eat them when you use them when you look at them in the tub you think they just look like bits of plastic do you put the hook all the way through them no do you just nick it through the so you just as you would do it would come out maybe half the way down the boat so you've got it's got an ounce of some movement yeah, yeah. but it's, it sort of spins and flips and turns and does all sorts of weird things so. hey, a stocky is literally re- made uh, bred to react to trout pellets that are thrown yeah plopping yeah, yeah so i wonder if it's oh who knows the shape i don't know yeah but um, cheese flavored trout pellets yeah so it's uh there's that um and uh, you know, looking at scents in general within with trout fish, they do they do definitely switch on to scent because we have it with the power bait and the paste that people use at Hanningfield. Can you smell my fingers? Uh, you can smell, yeah, <laughs> I can. That's, they what, stink. that's why I opted. You'll be driving home later, going, "What the hell has happened? What have I trodden in?" Um, trodden in? Yeah. Where um, have I been? Yeah. Where have you been? I went to South Who's, End. Who have you been? Who have you been with? Well, <laughs> there are some right yeah. sights on the pier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But um, the, the, the scent is, is in, apparently... Yeah. I've only, only been to the pub for one. <laughs> um, yeah. I've gone. You've thrown me off. I've gone, Dave. Um, is it time to go yet? Yeah. No, not quite. <laughs> Trout are switched on to scent. I think we could, I can agree. To, I can definitely confirm that because there's, there's certain days when certain flavours of power bait outfishes the others and it would, isn't necessarily the colour... It's more the bait, the the cut, the, the flavour. So some days garlic is preferential to um, liver, which is another quite popular one, or um, crustaceans. And Chub, all. yeah, cheese paste, yeah, a yeah. coloured river in the winter. Yeah, so that's got to be smell. It's definitely yeah. So they, we, I think we can agree. A pike, yeah. sniff out a dead bait. But thing is, like, I know, like the fish sense things through the lateral line and the the whatever you would call them receptors they have there but they're obviously they haven't got a nose they're not going around sniffing the water so are they tasting it in the water i guess it's more it's i probably... have absolutely no, no. Idea. other thing as well you're fishing these trout baits quite quickly so how yeah, does yeah. the smell get Digital charged bait. yeah uh-huh. it's uh-huh. all it i'm not dis- i don't think you discount anything i'm just finding it really difficult to work out in my head what actually is happening does the visual and the sound of it hitting the water get their attraction attraction and put them within the vicinity of and then the smell zone them in exactly because once they're near you can't if I was in the water within 10 minutes I'd know that was there you wouldn't be attracted to that smell well no no I'm not a trout no unless you're a very desperate individual yeah. but, um, <laughs> sharks with blood yeah they eels was. don't get back on eels we're not mentioning eels no. they're banned today no I feel like we should bring out some t-shirts but, like, no eel talk <laughs> I was going to buy you an Arsenal, black, the black away kit looks so smart. Yeah. But they're 70 quid a throw. And then I wanted to get writing on it. I thought, yeah. this is daft. I'm going to be spending 100 quid on a top. <laughs> and I was going to give it to you on the last podcast. And I thought, I can't because it's just yeah, it's ridiculous, it was a waste yeah. of money. But it would have been cool. We, we both needed one. Yeah. So it was like 200 quid a throw. And I thought, yeah. I'm not that rich. No. If someone sponsors us, we could be. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> now, going back to sharks, don't they detect <coughs> a minute amount of blood a so, long yeah. way away? Yeah, it's like a, 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 a dro- what, one millionth of a percent of blood to water ratio. Or I something no it's, and it's just... Yeah, I'm throwing that number out. Like, no, I definitely don't. But how do they pick it up? Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So fish obviously have the potential yeah. to um, yeah. t- detect yeah. so um, is, is, things, uh, blood. Yeah. Um, so obviously that stinky horrible cheesy thing mm-hmm. whatever that's got in it mm-hmm. I'm sure they don't smell it the same as us there's no. something in it they pick up yeah definitely Yeah, same as with colours you know we don't, we, how we visually see colours is different to how fish will see them mm. um, you know, obviously because their eyes are different so yeah I feel like uh, so that's, that's it with trout area fishing that, that's very popular very strong but within other types of fishing there's other scents and things that are popular that aren't quite as foul um, I can still smell it yeah 
Yeah. So we've got another. another <laughs> the, the, the wall, the shop isn't helping. It's no, like fermenting it on my no. finger. You got another one? Yeah, I've got another one. This one isn't bad though. So this yeah. is the Strike King Rage Baby Craw, and this has. Uh, well, it actually says Rage Tail with exclusive coffee scent. Oh. So the bass, because obviously these are all marketed for large mouth. Is that where we're in South End? So is that where the sort of the the the, the yuppies, the yuppies, yep. the sort of like yep. the early two thousands would have the coffee. This is it. Yeah. yeah. This is more yeah. of a. So this this is. Can I smell that one? Yeah, you want to smell that. One. So they, these ones are. You might notify. Are what you would call sort of downtown South End. This is this is uptown. You got so you got big cheese and then you've got mocha. Yeah. Got your <laughs> big coffee cheese. scent. Yeah. Uh-oh. You right with that? No. <laughs> Greasy things. Is. It's a combination of that craft beer, yeah. that dodgy, cheesy thing I've just smelled, and the yeah. camera yeah. going wrong. It's and the heat. And the heat. That's very gentle. Yeah, it's a very subtle. It's a, it's a, it's, um, I'm not sure if it smells like coffee, though. I have smelled it before. I can just about, but it's, it just smells a bit plasticky to me. Do you think, though? Because I can imagine that stench having an effect, but that's too subtle. Mm-hmm. Is that Again, more... unless, it, unless it's more of a... Chemical thing that we can't pick up that works. Or is it to catch the angler? Very possible to catch yeah, I don't the angler. Yeah, who knows? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying one's right or wrong, but because um, it's, it's been a few I've seen with like coffee and espresso. There's um, Black Flag is an Italian brand. Do a lot of sort of bass fishing lures, big like heavy flipping baits and things like that. And all of theirs is scented with espresso scent There's, aroma. I, I think there must be something in it. Yeah, but I just can't quite. No. Because I'm not a fish, I don't know what's going on. But I've seen them all. I've seen you know you have um, uh, who is it? LMAB. I've got a scent to their lures. It's like a, a seafood scent, so it's like a it's fish oils and crustacean and things like that. Uh, I've seen aniseed flavour. Back in the dark ages, yeah, dead bait. Yeah, I made a swim feeder. Yeah, that had a tampon in it. Yeah, and I'd get there's a certain type of fish oil that I use that's better mm-hmm. than all the other ones I've used. And I'd shrink it into the tampon. Specifically, not At saying which, t- which fish oil. And not, I can't tell you this. <laughs> That's all the secret. Definitely. Well, it's my, it, yeah. it, it works a treat. Yeah. The first time, I, I'd used it a few times. It, yeah. it didn't put the fish off. Yeah. And then I don't really fish with, I never used to fish with somebody dead baiting because this uh-huh. doesn't, but I sat next to me and Dennis Moles at a social. Yeah. On this drain and it ran left to right. Uh-huh. And it was pumping off quite hard. And Dennis, being the wily old fox, put himself downstream. Of course. And yeah. I, I knew what he was doing, but I thought, he doesn't know I've got the tampon race. <laughs> right, so we're just a social... You know, we just sat in the middle, and, the, and I had five pike, he had one, I had a 20. Mm-hmm. And he, he was, towards the end of the session, he was going, I don't understand this. He goes, these fish are obviously move. He talk a bit like that. Mm. And he goes, I don't understand this, Andy. These fish have got to be moving past my baits to yours. <laughs> and I went... Dennis, have you noticed? Well, Dan, have you noticed? Every run I've had is on the bait, the my right hand rod that's nearest yours. Mm-hmm. I said because they're homing in on that one and finding it first. Yeah. Well, why is that then? And I went, magic tampons. <laughs> but yeah, it's the the fish pick yeah. up the scent trail from a, the pike yeah, yeah. from a long way away, and they move up, and they were ignoring his dead baits. Yeah, I've seen it with um, I've done it with eel fishing. I've, I've put sponges in. Yeah. Ne- never done use tampon, but I've used sponges uh, with uh, with fish oils and, and things and blood. Dynamite. When you've got a bit of flow, obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And yeah. I won't... The, rig, the rigs are so clonky, you think... They don't, they don't care. Yeah. But they, as soon as you get them homing in, it works for yeah, yeah. But yeah. I have given too many secrets away. Yeah, stop it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, so you've got the cheese, you've got the coffee, you've got seafood scents. I'm going to smear Eric Edwards. Yeah. In stinky blue cheese yeah, on yeah. WPC. And hope it attracts fish. Just get to hang Just going to cover him. Hang a foot. Might dip him over the side, like <laughs> a bit of rubby. Do- hey, that's rubby dubby sack. Yeah. Is that is that is that cricket? Are we allowed Probably to do not. that? Probably not. No, especially not in a competition scenario. It'd be funny though, wouldn't it? It would be funny. You yeah. could do it to wind people up. Yeah. What's that? Ah, it's my blue cheese rubby <laughs> dubby. <laughs> but generally, the one that was always always struck me as a bit strange is aniseed. It's a popular one. But Hatch like, anglers. Yeah. And pigeon poo. Yeah. Roach. But why? Uh, Why do fish like it? I, I know they go. These old bo- old match anglers go mad for mole, proper molehill dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, all all that is is the colour of the water. It's got nothing in it. Yeah, they think, but it's the fine because the moles have. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. so fine. 
But yeah, they they used to use that just on its own. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just with chopped lobster. That's why I used to use it. Yeah. I think there's a lot in this, and also there's old housewife's tales as well, yes, which course, lend yeah. itself to fishing. But yeah, there's yeah. definitely something I still can't get my head round a shad or a trout bait that mm-hmm. you're putting back a grub that you're putting back to give it movement. How does it get time? For any scent trail. Or does it convert those follows into thinking it's saying that actually it's more edible? Could do, because you get you do get a lot of follows that you don't mm-hmm. see. Yeah. Uh, Westin do a the hollow tease, which comes with little looks like little cigarette filters that you can pop inside it and you can put scent on. Tom Moyer? Yep. Used to do the thang that had yep. a little channel in, you could yep. put you could put a um what trying to say, yeah, filter, but then soak it in some some so, lovely, cheesy, stinky, mm-hmm. but cracky scent first. And, uh... So you've got to think, like, <laughs> across across the world of lure fishing, people have been doing it in some way or another for forever. So in this got to, is it just the confidence of anglers? Does it just make you feel more confident, or is there something in it? Come on. I had two guys reach out to me on the on the private messaging with their solutions for the uh, the scenario I gave you your, your chub fishing yeah, I'm not going to tell you what they told me because it's secret yeah. and I like that I like the way that people actually reach out personally yes, so any, any uh, scent secrets yeah. if it's not a secret put it on the comments if it's yeah. a secret don't message Charlie message Andy <laughs> <laughs> he had the last two secrets I need to get a couple now I think no no that's alright I'm, I'm old. <laughs> old old and wisened yeah. I have a lot of secrets I'm that old I forget yeah. what the secrets are oh and it just goes talking, in <laughs> talking of old secrets, do you... I don't know if it's one you ever dabbled with. Do you ever dabble with WD-40? It was always a, a one that's... On all, dead baits? Yeah. It's, and Alka-Seltzer tablets. Yeah. Stuck in the mouth and they yeah. make the yeah. fizz up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was always one that sort of <clears> made, the, made the rounds with the sea fishing fraternity. But is that the oil WD-40. coming off? Yeah, it was made from fish oil. Yeah. It, like, WD-40 is made from fish oil. But, um, and also, it, because it's a... Um, Water displacement. They said it would make the natural scent last longer because you're displacing water from around your bait. But whether that's got anything to it, I don't All know. All I'm going to say about the old pipe fishing oils, mm. you had to try and find one with a limited amount of linseed, linseed oil in it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you might as well just use it on your cricket bat. Christ, you really are giving away too much now, aren't you? But you try and that's find one without linseed oil in it, it's oh. very difficult. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So have you, have you never, you're not dabbled in scents then? It's not something you've really Oh, dead baits, yeah, because I... No, I lure fishing, I mean. Well, you see, in my head, this is what I'm thinking, and I haven't, talking to you about it, it's made a little spark go off in my head. Mm-hmm. I won't go dead bait fishing unless I've got my tampons or... Yeah, really? It, dynamite. Yeah. But you have to have the right oil. If you have the wrong oil, they don't work. Yeah. You have to know which oil to use, and there's, I'm not going to go into it on a <laughs> form like this, because <laughs> it will blow it all. <laughs> How... <laughs> But there must be something in it. And I, I can't say on the Nedry yeah. or fishing a creature bait. So negative. Bag, I yeah. can see how it works yeah, straight yeah. away. Yeah. I just can't get my head around how it will work on something you're fishing quicker. Mm-hmm. Not to say it doesn't, because do our fish that quick to react to something like that? There yeah. must be, yeah? yeah. And like you look at a shark, it hones it in really quick. Yeah. yeah. So do, is, it, <coughs> is it one of those things that another 1% helps? Could be, yeah, could be. I'll tell you something the other way. Do you think there's any sense to put fish off? There must be. Well, I'll I mean, tell you one that I absolutely... That puts me off anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to go to McDonald's on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I've got one I'm a little bit superstitious about, actually. Diesel. I yes. will not re- fill my van up or car the day I'm going fishing. I will always do it the previous night to make sure I've had a shower and that. I'm exactly hands. the same. Yeah. yeah. I, I truly, and I've had it happen to me, had to, and this is why I'm like I am, I am now, I filled up... What's diesel. strange? Got, Did you drink it? Yeah, yeah. That was a, a totally different scenario. <laughs> um, I filled up with diesel, got it in my hands, and had one of the worst days fishing I've ever had when everyone else was catching. Yeah. So I was convinced yeah. it was due to diesel. But it doesn't matter if it's not. No. It's about... I can't imagine it's fish like it. So it, why? it lingers, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, like, yeah. You didn't get dropping on your hand. You yeah. spent it for hours. Like. Yeah, I had. It happened to me once. I went somewhere. I was dead certain I was going to catch, mm-hmm. and it was. I remember I dripped some diesel on me at the petrol pump. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and there was something else that I used to avoid, like the um, insect spray, and if it would deet in it, 
well, yeah, that's the American anglers yeah. go, Matt, yeah. when I used to get the mozzie spray out on the musky mm-hmm. boats, they go, hey, what are you doing? Yeah. No. But that is killer. Yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't use that when fishing. Definitely. Th- yeah. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's, what do people think? Yeah. I, I think there's definitely something in it. 100%. Yeah. I, 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 now I'm talking about it, I'm realizing I'm more funny with things. Just the thing I do ritually is when I go fishing, I tend to wash my hands in the water before the, the lake water, river water, sea water. I think I just rinse my hands in it before I do anything else. I've not that it makes a blind bit of difference, probably, but I feel better in myself that I've touched something that the fish are used to, used to before I'm touching things. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, like um, I'm cleansing. Oh, hold on a minute. I've had a, a real eureka moment. Oh. Is it the smell of the human? Could be. That puts the fish off. Well. And do these scents help mask our grubbiness? Very possibly. And do the, does the clean, cleanse it, cle, does the, the clean, cle, the cleaner, I don't know what I was going to say, English does the tough. cleaner angler catch more? Maybe. Or does the dirtier angler yeah. catch more because maybe they're less chemical. They look like shower gel and deodorant and things in all over their hands. Yeah. Yeah. If you've just got natural human odour, it's better than chemical odour. Who knows? We should do a video. You won't, you don't shower for a week. I'll shower every day and then we'll see who catches the most I'll fish. smell like this, mate. <laughs> But there's a thing with women as well. You know, pheromones. Is, yeah, pheromones. And, and I have, you know, I think it's actually quite sexist that it's just their pheromones because there's some very talented anglers out there, lady anglers. But you see it very often with a group of people and there'll be one lady angler who catches more than everyone else. And obviously nowadays we could, we could substantiate that to the skill a bit more. But the, the old wives' tale was always the, the pheromones. It's got to have something to it. Like scent in general has got to have something to it. But like you say, whether it, whether it, how applicable it is to fishing sort of fast, reactive methods in lure fishing, I don't know. Does it mask? I, I wonder if it actually masks the human smell. Now I'm do. thinking about that yeah, now. Yeah, could well do. It's not yeah. something I'd actually consider. Well, it, sometimes I put lures in my pocket. Mm-hmm. If, I'm, if I know I'm going yeah. to use them, well, has that got the smell of... Fabric conditioner. Fabric conditioner. Yeah, yeah, washing powder and has all that. Has that, that put them yeah. off? Yeah. Does Eric smearing his baits in this bite juice yeah. actually mask the human smell? Is he, yeah. is he a stinky angler? So if you reckon know. if you kept your baits in your pants for a little while, it might be better off. I think I really put them off. Yeah. It could smell like that cheesy stuff I've yeah. got on my fingers. <laughs> God, that stinks. Ah, yeah. oh, got a weird, I'll tell you later, off camera. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, but it does make you wonder, doesn't yeah. it? Maybe yeah. it's the reverse. Good boy, Maybe it's yeah. masking human smell. Yeah, I'd be interested yeah. to see. I know, I know there's a few guys out there, I know him personally, who absolutely swear by certain additives and scents and things like that. Like the Lloyd twins have got one that they love. Yeah, so we can't love. keep mentioning that. Um, so we will by accident mention their favourite. Well, they, they, did it, they did it publicly and then they couldn't get it anywhere because everyone bought it. We won't mention it, but we will <laughs> blackmail them. Yeah. Yeah. So, boys, what, what, do, we want, what do we want off them? Um, well, I need to cash in that trout trip they never took me on. Couple of top waters that they use. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you know which one it is. Yep. yep. So send us a lure each, boys, and we won't mention the flavour <laughs> of the uh, additive they use. Otherwise, yep. I'm afraid we'll episode 19, <laughs> the live. Yeah. That's what we should do on the live. Yeah. If you don't pay up by episode before episode 20, so what are those lures? The secrets. The duo Shin Mushis. That's what we want. Yeah, one of those each, please. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, it's open season on your additive. Yeah. That's all fair in love, war and so. lure fishing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Who else can we blackmail while we're on it? <laughs> Everyone. Tom Hunt, can we yeah. blackmail him? Yeah, definitely. Tom, yeah. Well, I don't know, Tom doesn't give away any secrets, though. We will get some off him, won't we? Right. Yeah. Okay. What are you thinking? Oh, I have, well, mate, it's been such a long day. I think we've, we've got to be there, haven't we? We've been we have. done. Yeah. There was something else I was going to mention, but it's completely gone off the top of my head. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening, guys. We hope that you enjoyed that one. We want to hear some opinion because me and Andy aren't decided either way. I think that after all that conversation, I'm still don't know whether I think it's a thing or not in lure fishing. So I'd like to hear some opinions from you guys, uh, real life experiences and uses of, of scents and whether you think it made a difference. Maybe you've had scenarios where you've caught nothing all day, used a lure with a scent or added a scent to a bait that you've been catching nothing and it switched it around. Or like you say, the other way around, maybe you've touched a bit of diesel on wretched days fishing. I'd like to hear some stories, some opinions. Settle it once and for all. I'll tell you what, we're going bass fishing soon. Yeah. One of us should, we'd really freak Robin out. One of us will have to do something with the lures, if one yeah. just use. Yeah. I'll use Wayne's lures, yeah. dipped in some kind of... Diesel. <laughs> red diesel. Just dip them in no, red diesel. We'll get the Lloyd's yeah. additive. We'll use that. 
It's best like that. Well, we'll soon find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. We'll do it. Yeah. Good place to round it up. Why not? Yeah. So, thanks for watching, guys. See you. Oh, don't forget August twenty second. Second. Seven will be episode twenty finale of season one, and a big all time high live with loads of special guests and secrets and things like that. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. You can drop a lot of people in it. <laughs> See you next time, guys. Cheers. <laughs>